Hello and welcome back to this edition of Bayou Time. Again, your host, Keith Weissite, licensed clinical social worker. So very glad you're joining us and we appreciate it. You know, we've been telling you stories about people and how the storm has impacted or affected them. I hope you stay tuned for the next couple segments because we're going to share with you some stories about people that it affected in a way that you are probably not aware of. First, I'd like to welcome into the program Father Philip. Father Philip, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for calling me. Yeah, all right. You're very welcome. And so, again, pastor at St. Joseph Catholic Church. And joining us also is Kim Guy. Kim is a local commercial fisherman down uh, in Chauvin. Kim, thanks for joining us. Thank you for bringing me here. Absolutely. And so, you know, I think a lot of people feel like, a lot of people around the country feel like they know what it's like to see a hurricane because they watch it on TV. And then there are other people like us who know what it's like because we lived it. But Kim, you had a rather unique experience for the storm. Tell us a little bit about where you were and why for the storm. Well, everybody knows if you live down the bay, you want to save your boat. That's one of the most important things. If, if you have a boat, you want to save the boat because that's your livelihood. Right. I mean, if you need to save that. I knew we knew it was going to be bad, but we didn't expect it to be this bad. Right. And when it once it got so bad it was like it's too late to do anything so right. we there's, just, there's no we, way to move it no at way this to point, get right? away i mean we was just stuck there so we just prayed for the best and it didn't come out so good because at about one o'clock the roof of the house flew off and we knew everything was going to come to pieces and right. then at about three o'clock three thirty something like that all the ropes started breaking on the boat and and we didn't have anywhere, I didn't have anywhere else to go. And all of a sudden the boat just took off from the dock and got about midway of the bar and the thing just rolled over with me in it. And wow. I could see the window coming on the other side, but there's nothing for me to do. And I just flew straight across the window and passed over the kitchen stove, the sink and everything. And I landed in the window. Oh my goodness. And so it, it threw over. you over through the boat. Yeah. Landed on the window on the opposite side. Opposite side, 15 foot across the the cabin I flew across and wow I didn't remember anything for a little while and then all of a sudden I just got up when I fell in the water and when okay. I opened my eyes I looked to the front of the boat and the front end went underneath the water and all the windows was submerged so now all the windows in the cabin of the, the boat are yeah out. they and all the, and the the whole front part of the boat yeah is in went the water. down and I could see the door in the top and that's the only way I could get out was through the door in the top and it was eight ten feet away and I jumped and jumped and jumped to try to catch to that door and I couldn't get the door and I finally realized I climbed back over the cabinet and the stove and everything and I, I sat on the door and believe me, it was blowing. Everybody asks me how hard, I, I don't know, I can't tell you, right. it was too hard. Yeah, <laughs> it, was, it was hard enough that at 1 a.m. your roof comes off your house. Yeah. It's hard enough to break all of these very strong ropes that's got yeah. your boat. Because I know y'all went back and made sure that it was tied up with the right amount of, uh, of leeway, right? Yeah. Make sure you give it enough leash yeah. to make sure it can float some. Enough to rip all that off. Enough to flip over. Have you, has your boat ever flipped before? No. 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 I kind of knew that answer. No. I mean. So, of, of course no. not. And so how big is your boat? 55 feet. So we're talking about a 55-foot vessel that windows are blown out, flipped over, and the, the front of your boat is turned in the water. Mm -hmm. and, and thank God that you've got a good kitchen, right? Thank yeah. God you've got a good kitchen in your boat. Yeah. It allowed you to climb to safety. Climb back up. That's the only way I could get out because I couldn't, I couldn't reach to the door. The boat was about halfway in the water, and it was, it was probably seven feet of water in the cabin, and the door was another seven feet above, and you you sideways so right you you can't jump that high i mean right and just a lot of stuff goes through your head and in, in a matter of a little, a little while well, yeah and so it's got to be a harrowing experience and you know it, it brings your your faith to mind right <laughs> yeah. thank god you're you're you know yeah. got a good faith and that that your boat was blessed and something we're going to talk about a little bit later with father but, but boy, it's got to really make you, you kind of question, oh, my gosh, what do I do? Yeah. And, but so you said that you kind of weren't, weren't aware there for a little while. You had gotten thrown around in the boat. And so the only thing I can think of as, as a committed Christian, God took care of you. And that's, what, that's, that's the first thing that came to mind. I guess he's read, not read it for me yet that 
I have something other in life to look forward to. And I prayed so much that day, it was like, I think he's only, it's only me that's praying, but everybody else was, was doing the same thing. Yeah. Clearly, our God hears. Our God listens. Yeah. And uh, he heard your prayer, and, and he protected you. Yeah. Uh, and so your, your family was able to be protected as well, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They Did had you... left them. I, I didn't want them to stay. It's, okay. It's 54 years I've been living there. I've never seen a hurricane like this. We heard stories of our grandparents telling us stories of like right. stuff like this, but we, we never seen anything like this. And I, I truly believe all that stories when seen right they, they used to tell us that they used to have to stay in oak trees for a couple of days because they didn't have anything left the water was so high the water was so high they had to wait and wait, wait it out and wait right for there. things and i believed them yeah absolutely <laughs> it, it, it came true in in your experience well i'm yeah. sorry you had to go through that yeah. but i'm glad to be able to talk to you today about it and so kim we're going to take a short break if you don't mind father we'd like to talk to you a little bit more about how the importance of what was done last year and why that fleet was uh, blessed and the importance of that. And, and Father Philip, if ever there's an expression or uh, a time that we are thankful for the blessing of the fleet, this is a great example. Yes, yes, surely I can say that. Yeah, and so you've been involved in the blessing of the fleet. Let's talk a little bit about it and, and why that's important. Actually, I am there last five years down the bayou at St. Joseph, and every year we have this traditional blessing of the boats by the priest, and I found it was a celebration of the entire community. Mm -hmm. And they all looked forward to it. Mm -hmm. Because most of them go on the waters, and most of them fish, and their daily bread depends on this fishing season. Right. Either shrimping or any other fish they go and to And commercial catch. fishing, all of those. And when I was going down the bayou, blessing the boats, I found everybody gathering together at every location, at every house on the bayous. Mm -hmm. And they really celebrate. Right. And when we go blessing each boat, they really look forward to it. Mm -hmm. You know, listening to Kim's story, I really know for sure how much people really cherish it because mm -hmm. of their faith. Right. Because years and years, they have been living by the bayous, by the sea, and going to the waters, they know. Right. It all depends on God. And the nature. Right. The nature is in the hands of God. Their protection is not in their hand. Right. So the prayer, the faith of the people and the blessing they receive on this day of the boat blessing, they really hold it so dear and so close to their heart. And, and so f even for people like me who's, who live in downtown Homa and live in the city of Homa, we would go down yes. to see the blessing of the fleet. It was such a cherished event. And so even through COVID, you were able to do something special. So Kim, what happened during COVID for the blessing of the fleet? Well, we, they wasn't gonna have the blessing of the fleet anymore. So a few of us figured, well, if we can't all be together at one time, we brought a few of our boats at our house and we called Father Philip and sure. And he came and just stood away and, and blessed all our boats. And I mean, it's a way of life for us. Right. It's, it's like, that's what you needed to be done to begin a season with. If you really believe, and it's been there through generations. And right. I mean, it's, it's for the love of God. I mean, that's why we do it. And, and that's why it's so very important that on April 10th, on the Sunday, right. we will have the very uh, the ability to gather a little bit better, than, right. more than we have in the past. Yes. And we will be having a blessing of the fleet down in Chauvet, right? right? Even during COVID, we couldn't have the elaborate blessing that we used to have. Still, the people look forward to it. Yes. Like Kim, he called me personally. He said, no, I need my boat blessed. Right. So personally, I went to his place and blessed his boat and other places also where we could go through right. because people really looked forward to it and they really depended on this blessing somehow because, again, their faith. Right, and, and so Mike, much like Kim said, his boat was blessed, he was blessed, and he was protected. Protected, yeah. Through the most difficult storm maybe some of us have ever seen here. 
-hmm. And so a, a blessing, if you will, amid all the destruction, huh, Kim? Yeah. And so yeah. that's what we need. And that's what the offer is, that people can have their boats blessed. And we get back to that elaborate celebration that people down the bayou and people could people go from all over to do and experience the blessing yeah, of the Yeah, they come down, you know, from all over, like people to watch it and they get excited also to see these people all in the bayous gathering together, celebrating and looking forward to this blessing that receive every year, once a time, you right. know. Once so that's year. really amazing to look at and your own faith really is moved. Right. You see the people simple faith, but totally depend on God. That's exactly right. And, and being down at St. Joseph and being the pastor down there, it's obvious that you're passionate about making sure that the people that live there get what they need. And this blessing is so very important. Oh, yeah, surely. I just look forward to this day of the right. boat blessing. You know, as I said, it is a celebration and it is experiencing people's faith, right. you know, and going down, blessing every boat, People right. thanking and just waving the hands. Oh, it's really wonderful. Right. I and, mean, and just the appreciation, appreciation. and the love right. that's down there. Appreciate the love. <clears throat> so that's, that's Sunday, February the 10th. When does it start and exactly where? 12. At 12 PM noon. In front of the church. In front of the church. We all will gather. Whoever can gather at that point, a few right. boards. Right. And we have a prayer there. Right. Then we go down the bayou, blessing each boat on the sides. And people all will be on the sides right. of Stand the bayou. Right, on sides of the bayou, yes. people in their boats, and, and back to that traditional Tradition. blessing yes. that we've seen. And so if ever there's a time to come back to something, it's this is a true ability to celebrate the blessing of the fleet like people have experienced it before. And so this is one of those things to really be excited about coming back. Yes, and people look forward to it. Yeah, you I, know. absolutely. Well, Kim, I thank you very much for coming on and sharing your story with us. Uh, and I know you'll get your boat blessed here on Sunday, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, so, and, and hopefully you don't experience anything like you've done for Ida no. ever again. And, no. uh, and good luck in your recovery. Some thank of us you. are still living out of our homes, and so I understand truly yeah. what it's like. To, for that. And Father, thank you so much for coming on and, and for being here and for celebrating that, going to the homes when needing it and blessing their boats and now celebrating this this Sunday. We appreciate it very much. Thank you so much. I'm uh, really happy that you're airing it and the people are able to just, you know, understand and just listen and, you know, to pray for us also there on the bayous. Absolutely. We appreciate it. All right, guys, that will do it for this particular segment. Don't go anywhere. A lot more local TV here with HTV.